Hey FCF, we're continuing in our journey in core critical truths. Now we turn uh, turn a corner a little bit last week where we're starting to talk about Christian growth. Now a little bit of a fast review. Remember, our our foundation always has to be God as He has revealed Himself in His Word, His character. God is light, God is love, God is spirit, particularly God is love. It tells us a lot about His character, about His methodology since He's love. He wants to have loving relationships with we that are his image bearers. This means that he cherishes our free will. He does not seek to intimidate us. He does not seek to terrify us, con- control us. He wants an authentic relationship. In other words, God wants us to authentically like him, trust him, love him for himself, just as you and I want to be uh, authentically trusted, like, and love for ourselves as well. So foundational truths as we read the rest of what scripture says so we're talking about growth authentic growth and and when we're talking about growth the bible says that since god created us in his image we are meant to when we mature wear the very image of christ when i'm all grown up when you're all grown up as a follower of christ we will be conformed it says in romans 8 29 or transformed to the very image of christ so that's our developmental goal we start on that journey in this life but how do we grow in that respect? I mean, we're talking about deep character transformation at the deepest levels, motivational levels, feeling levels, uh, re- reaction levels. So how does that go? How does that work? How does that development take place? We, we looked at a verse last week. I'm going to start there again in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. It says, But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To Him be glory both now and forever. So... All growth, all authentic spiritual growth, transformational growth, it, it's rooted in grace, that, that certainty that God loves me, He's for me, that all He needed from me all along was my trust, and that once I put my trust in Him, that He'll work in me, He'll work through me, He'll never leave me, never forsake me. So there's that anchoring of my soul. I must know that I'm a, a member of God's family, a child of God for time and eternity. And it says we grow not only in grace, but we grow in the knowledge. It's it's the more God illuminates us through his word to see the truth about God in Christ that that it stimulates growth in me. I, I see myself in his light, and hence I'm able to see things that need to be corrected and cleansed and so forth. All right, I'm going to take you to a few verses that we have looked at briefly before, but I want to show you how climactic it is uh, our position of grace once we turn back to God in trust by putting our trust in Christ. In the Gospel of John, uh, Jesus said this in John 5, 24. He says, I tell you the truth, whoever hears my word and believes him, and that word believes is the Greek word pistuo, it means trusts him, whoever uh, hears my word and believes or trusts him who sent me, has, present tense, eternal life and will not be condemned. And that's important to hear, will not be condemned. He has crossed over from death to life. Now, now that's the, the anchoring we need of, of faith. Once we put our faith, our trust in Christ, God looks at us as those that have already left this world, entered into his eternal family, and we are forever a part of that eternal family. We've crossed from death the abode of death to, to life. So that anchoring, that certainty, that security is what I'm trying to get at, is critical for our growth. We can't grow very well when we're still very insecure about the foundations of our relationship with Christ. Acts um, 13, 39, or 38, we looked at it again, but I want to repeat it. It says, Therefore, my brothers, I want you to know that through Jesus, the forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you. We, we need to know that we are forgiven, we are accepted, we are a member of the family of God, that he's going to father us, he's going to work in us and work through us, and, and he's going to finish the job. So there's another one, just to kind of confirm um, this clarity that we need to have before we can grow. Uh, Romans 8.1, it says, Therefore there is now no condemnation, for those who are in Christ Jesus. Another version says, or those who are, un- are in union with Christ Jesus. When I put my trust in Christ, I'm in union with him. I am in Christ. But it says that for those that 
simply put their trust in him. We're far from perfect. We, we have a lot of growing to do. There is no condemnation. I have to internalize that. And that is going to be harder for some of us than others. I myself, through, through the years, some 50 years now of following Christ, that's, that's one I struggle with. Um, it has nothing to do with my trust in God's word. It has everything to do with how banged up emotionally I am. So we have to have that anchoring, though, to grow. Because if not, let me show you some of the things that happen. There are some of us that um, maybe would identify as Christians, but when we really assess, am I growing to be more Christ-like? Is my character changing? Is, am I seeing what the, the book of Galatians calls the fruits or characteristics of the Spirit of God successfully working in my life, like love and joy and peace and faithfulness and goodness and all these things? If we look, we maybe don't see the kind of deep transformation in our character that we would like to see. And here's some of the reasons why that can happen. Uh, sometimes we, we still retain a kind of a, a fearful or a fear-oriented uh, spirit toward God. We, we want His benefits. In other words, we, we want to go to heaven. We want to know we're forgiven. But we're still not comfortable with God. And so we try to always fi- figure out what is the bare minimum? You know, what what is it that he wants me to do? How do I get him off my back and on my side? We're still fear-oriented and you can't grow. Authentic growth can never happen when my the, when what is motivating my interactions with God is my fear of him. Uh, I'll never grow. Authentic growth has to come from the deepest levels of my desire. In other words, I spontaneously and authentically, I admire God. I I like the way he thinks. I like the way he feels. I like his plans. I like his purposes. I like his character. I I like his righteousness. There's a spontaneousness to that and an authenticity to that. You know, it's kind of like with some people. We, We just like them or we don't like them. But if my Interactions with God are really based on I'm, I'm just trying to figure out what I've got to do to make it to heaven, you know, or to get his blessing on me in this life. Well, that, that's a fear-oriented approach. Another approach that's very close to it is what I call a, an appeasement-based approach to God or a mercenary approach. There are some people that their interactions with God or what they call trusting Christ, it's really uh, trying to figure out how to get God to bless them, how they can figure out how to control God, get all that power he has working for us. And so they're kind of like mercenaries, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll do what they do for pay. And um, with that is an appeasement. For example, uh, it is common to hear Christians say things like, hey man, you got to have your quiet time, you got to have your daily devotional time, and that is good. That is that time, you know, however you call it or however you work it out, but time where you are interacting with God through his word and and probably some prayer too. But sometimes Christians look at that time as sort of a a weight on a scale. And so if if I if I get, you know, 5 days out of 7 uh, I've had a good week, and, and so now I know God feels good about me, or God's going to bless me especially. It becomes a meritorious act, and we measure our spiritual development based on keeping of the, the meritorious act of a quiet time. But but the only way we can measure spiritual development is actual development. <laughs> I'm actually becoming more Christ-like version of myself. But if our motivation is not right, that's what I'm trying to get at. If our motivation isn't rooted in grace, I know I'm forgiven, I know I'm loved, I know I'm accepted, um, and now I am spontaneously uh, drawn to wanting to do God's will and to learn to become just like Him. All right, we'll stop there for today, and we'll pick up this theme of growth again tomorrow.